So hi everyone, this is Yuthi Bilwal and with us is uh, the Dean for the International uh, Department, Ms. Natalia Koroleva and I'm so happy that she has taken out time to come for the uh, this uh, meeting where we are going to discuss about some important points of St. Petersburg's Northwestern State Medical uh, University. So thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, Yuthi. I'm really happy to see you. Yeah. So, uh, see, there are many students who are really interested now. And as we are uh, telling the students and creating awareness about the university, they are really interested. There are a few more questions on the students that they have right now. First of all, uh, can you please tell us about uh, studying, uh, the experience of studying in the university? Experience of studying in the university. So uh, we are quite a big university with quite a long story. And uh, by now we have uh, a normal number of international students to provide them good teaching and learning uh, environment and activities. That is about 500 by now. And uh, just uh, as far as uh, you are interested in uh, such an educational program as general medicine EMI, mm -hmm. uh, I can see that we have quite successful uh, graduates who now work for public health system in India. Uh, for example, they graduated somewhere in 2004, 2003, or probably 2013, and they grew up, uh, turned back to India after that, they grew up as professionals there, successfully mm -hmm. taking the uh, qualification exam, and after that, the residency course, and uh, just started their professional lives at Indian hospitals and public uh, health system. So St. Petersburg, this university has a lot of experience of teaching the Indian students because as you told that there are 10,000 graduates who have already uh, passed from India who are, who are Indians. So um, right now, as you're inviting more students to study here, can you tell about the English medium curriculum? Like now you have started about it. So the whole curriculum will be in English? Yes, uh, regarding general medicine, uh, that is focused on uh, Indian students and other nationalities and countries that are overseas countries and nationalities. Uh, the medium of instructions is totally English. So having enrolled uh, this uh, into this pro uh, program from the first year till the end of the sixth year, all the students will uh, study in English. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, just uh, our students who, uh, are provided with the opportunity to learn Russian from the first year as well, because that is very important for medical students in uh, Russia or the hell. Uh, for the end of the second year of general medicine EMI, uh, all our students go into clinics for clinical rotations, for clinical attachments, and they will communicate with the uh, hospital staff, and that is very important with the patients only in Russian, because the state language of the Russian Federation is Russian, yeah, like this. Right. Even in our regional uh, places where there are regional languages, the student has to learn their regional language because local language is important. So definitely it's very important to learn Russian. And also it's nice because it is included in the tuition fee. They don't have to pay anything extra. It is in the yes. Class. Yes, exactly. Uh, the Russian language course is uh, integrated into the curriculum and it is under the tuition fee, fixed tuition fee. Uh, you shouldn't pay extra, You're only in the case if uh, just you have decided yourself to take some extra hours extra or extra classes. course, uh, either in, at our university or at another educational organization. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so you're in your university when the students are doing the practical classes. So, do they, do you provide cadavers, dead bodies? Yes, from uh, the fourth year, they are provided with cadavers 
Mm -hmm. uh, just and they are very active with these practicals during this fifth year. And also they will have a number of academic hours within different clinical disciplines when they are the sixth year students. Okay. So when the final exam is given by the student, uh, does it allow the students to work in polyclinics and hospitals or how it works after that? Yes, uh, final state exam, uh, that is some kind of the uh, um, final step yeah. of general medicine AMI and it's six years. And uh, uh, every student that has take, undertaken uh, six years uh, at our university will have to uh, just take final state exam. And uh, after taking the final st state exam, normally students have, not students, but graduates have right to work in the polyclinics and occupy the position of the therapist there. Therapist. They can be, uh, work as therapists. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, tell us about, apart from the curriculum and everything, tell us about the safety and security of the student, the campus and about the hostels in the university campus. Security is totally provided by St. Petersburg, our university, and all, uh, I don't know, authorities that are here in St. Petersburg. The academic sphere is really supervised, and we have a lot of students not uh, from India only, but also from different regions, regions of Russia from such countries that were the part of the Soviet Union some way in the past, like, uh, for example, uh, Belarus, like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and the university is in charge of the security of these students. And regarding uh, the provision of this security, for example, we host our uh, international uh, students at the hostel that is located uh, directly at the camp campus of our university. Mm -hmm. And also we provide all our students with all needed recommendations mm -hmm. how to be uh, with, uh, under the security. And moreover, within our university, we have special departments uh, that control, for example, the presence of our students at the place of their residence, like dormitory or hostel. Uh, and also we provide with all necessary recommendations here. Moreover, moreover, uh, just during their uh, teaching and learning activities, uh, at the university, they are really monitored by the teaching staff and dean's office staff because we collect on the information on the presenteeism level and submit this information to the dean of general medicine department. And uh, also we can inform just parents about, for example, low academic performance or low presenteeism uh, level and so on. That is strictly monitored and controlled at our university. So that means the parents would be uh, told about and you know, informed about any such things about the students? Mm -hmm. The parents can uh, request, uh, send a kind request to uh, us to the yeah. international department and uh, the dean's office of general medicine department, and they will be informed in this case. The students have, think that Saint Petersburg, because it's such a uh, nice city, and you know, students think that maybe the cost of living would be too much high. So, what do you think? Is it average, or it's actually very much high to live here? That is quite average. In comparison with, with Moscow, we have a little bit lower prices and our cost of living is uh, lower. Uh, as far as we are the center of northwestern region of uh, Russia, uh, just uh, if we calculate uh, the prices will be quite average for all the region like this. Okay. 
and uh, once the student uh, graduates from here uh, they can apply anywhere in the world like even for us army and uk plab and everywhere Yes, uh, they can and they do it because there is such a procedure as diploma verification via such service, services as uh, GMC, for example. And weekly, we verify uh, all uh, the diplomas of uh, our former international students involving students from India. Just on average, uh, weekly, we verify about 15, 20 diplomas. Really, like this. It's a normal procedure. The university is quite aware about this uh, procedure and we comply with all the requirements. Yeah. So just want to tell the students if you apply to the ECFMG or to the UK plan, the GMC is the authority which asks the university to uh, recognize and authorize that the diploma is correct and the student has studied from this university. So once the university uh, confirms that, then only they process for the authentication of the degree. So that process tells that, you know, so many students are actually applying for these many uh, institutes. Uh, regarding postal, probably I will tell you some details. I will describe some details. Yes. Uh, I arrived uh, from my trip uh, around India <laughs> with uh, educational seminars and exhibitions only uh, just two days ago. Mm -hmm. And yesterday uh, at our university, I attended the meeting with all the heads of the department to report uh, to them on my trip, uh, which outcomes I had. And there were also the representatives of the dormitory management. Mm -hmm. And I informed that we are going to invite uh, and host uh, many more in the students from India in comparison with the previous time, for example, previous year, and they said that the hostel that is located on the university campus uh, will be only for international students. So there will not be domestic students. Of course, uh, the university have quite enough hostels. We have two more, but they are located a little bit far from the university. It can take around uh, 40 minutes to get from that, those hostels to the university campus. And we took a decision to provide our overseas students with the places and seats, uh, rooms only in the, uh, that hostel that is located on the university campus. Okay. We have uh, four blocks there and uh, 12 floors. Okay. Uh, each floor is equipped with kitchen and uh, washroom facilities, shower rooms. And uh, just even if we uh, get some specific request that girls want to live only like separate from boys, uh, we are ready to uh, meet this request. Really, Yukti, I've said everything, all the requests that I got from Indian parents. And I, yesterday I reported on these requests, just my colleagues were, even they were not surprised because the university is international and we understand that yes, if the culture requires such a thing, we will try to meet the requirements. What should we do? No, I know, I know. This must be, might be coming as a, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but important. if people will uh, 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 feel uh, themselves safer or even, uh, I don't know, more comfortable when uh, there is uh, just uh, like uh, uh, gender separation at the hospital. Yes, we will try to provide it. But, um, you know, uh, there is such a thing that uh, students arriving from different countries to Russia they become more and more multicultural because we are really, our city is really multicultural and multi-conventional. And uh, just uh, the students uh, learn a lot of cross-cultural things, a lot of things from cross-cultural communication. And they really try to get involved into a new culture, to uh, just perceive it, to acknowledge new, new things, to try these new things. There is nothing that we are quite uh, 
a civilized European and so on. Yeah, right. That's very nice. Because I think this one thing would uh, really be important for Indian parents as they were really concerned with all the seminars we've been and And uh, such facilities are available in some other international universities as well, especially for Indian students considering their need and requirement for this. About the, uh, the weather uh, conditions also, like in the winters, how the students, uh, like the central heating, uh, heating system and everything, uh, can you elaborate how the students keep themselves warm during winters? Uh, you know, uh, just today is the 5th of July. And uh, I'm um, bare uh, armed, yes, yeah. Yeah. like this. Uh, today is very hot, around plus 19, uh, 29 oh. uh, degrees. Yes, the weather is really sunny and nice. So uh, in summer, we have summer. Sometimes it can be rainy, but also in India, we have such a phenomenon as monsoon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> In a lot of cities, specifically uh, in the south of India. Uh, just nonetheless, we have four seasons, and these four seasons are real seasons. So in summer, we have summer, yeah, and it will be only three months. Uh, from September, autumn will start. In September, you will enjoy it quite a comfortable weather. Uh, around uh, during the day, around plus 15, sometimes plus 17. But during night, uh, the weather will go, uh, the temperature will go down, and sometimes we have even minus two. So that means the autumn starts. Uh, St. Petersburg is very beautiful during this period. It is covered with uh, uh, not only green, but also yellow, uh, red leaves that fall down from the trees and so on. So people enjoy this period normally. From October uh, and late October specifically, some kind of um, uh, European-like uh, winter starts. We do not have a lot of snow yet, but sometimes, sometimes it can be quite snowy. So it depends. I do not know on what, on atmosphere, on climate changes. This year, for example, we had quite a moderate winter with quite little amounts of snow. Yes. Uh, and from December till uh, March, we will have real winter with quite low degrees. So, and uh, Indian students and their parents should know about it in advance because you have to get ready to this period. You should wear hats, caps, scarves, gloves. It is important, otherwise you will burn your skin with frost and it, it will be really a medical problem. Uh, so, and there is such a fact that the uh, hostel is located on the university campus and it will take you only around two minutes to get to the uh, some educational department. Uh, to some building, and sometimes students think uh, that, okay, I will just, will not put on even a jacket, it is only, for example, zero, uh, it's okay, but it's not like that. During the day, the temperature can fall uh, to minus 10 even, just over one, uh, several hours, I would say. So during uh, winter, you should take care about yourself. And also you should remember that we are the northwestern part of uh, Russia. North is a key word here. And so uh, we have the period of so-called dark days. Mm -hmm. When the light day is very short, and it is, this period starts from late October and lasts nearly to the middle of March, like okay. this. Okay. Uh, the daylight, uh, the light day will be very, very short, starting from 9 a.m. till uh, 4 p.m. But soon you will have a very beautiful and romantic period during spring and part of summer. That is called the period of white nights when the uh, sun doesn't go down. Yeah. And from April, we will have quite a comfortable weather, just around sometimes plus 10, sometimes plus 5. It depends. Inside the university, it's a heating system. Ah. That is not a problem. Inside the university, all public places, all apartment blocks or all hostels, 
uh, we have central heating system that is switched on uh, in the end, uh, from mid to end of September. Okay. And uh, that is switched off from mid April till the beginning of May. Okay. And you're period uh, just our, all the buildings in St. Petersburg, all the buildings I uh, just underline here, yes, are heated normally. And uh, sometimes it is even hot, like about plus 25, plus 27. We open windows. Yeah. Sometimes we switch off. <laughs> this central heating because for, for a while because it's too hot. So in this connection, it is very uh, comfortable in Saint Petersburg. That's very nice because in India also, you know, uh, because of the placement of our country is such that southern India doesn't have winters and doesn't have snow, but northern India uh, do have winters also. And of course, if you go to the parts like Jammu and Kashmir, they have snow. So. Mostly the northern India, uh, northern India students do have the idea of cold temperature and you know how some some years it is too much cold in Delhi, some years it's not that much cold, average cold. So the temperature really fluctuates. Great. So I think this is uh, good information available now for the students and those who are watching this video will be able to make a good choice. And uh, I hope they will choice the most beautiful city of Russia. <laughs> <laughs> the best, uh, medical uh, academy of uh, St. Petersburg. So thank you so much, Natalia. I think this information was very much needed. And uh, have a good time. Thank you very much for your interest. And uh, let me express uh, my esteem yes. to my university team. What you do is very important, really. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.